Why am I now building a beginner's airfix kit? Is a really excellent question that needs a bit of context. Whilst we were out picking up some art supplies, my 11 year old son fixated on a Mr. Craft Gloucester Javelin plastic aircraft kit, which he insisted on buying against my advice. It then sat untouched on the side for a week before I opened it and read the very brief instructions. In addition to what was in the box, we would also need enamel paint, thinners, paint brushes, masking tape, glue, side snips and emery boards. Now, back when I used to make airfix kits, I had all of those things. But now, well, a quick scroll on Amazon showed a cheap way to get a good number of those things all delivered was in an Airfix starter pack. So I ordered myself a Spitfire, which came with paints, brushes and glue. I also ordered some thinners, tape and a cheap set of snippers. Since Henry was going to need help slash supervision, I optimistically figured we'd maybe sit and build our models together. So one thing I discovered on this starter kit was that the paints it comes with are not enamel, which as far as I can remember is all we used to have when I was doing this as a child. The paints this starter kit comes with are actually acrylic, which much more up my street. So I thought, ah, oh, that's interesting. They've shipped a kit ready to paint with four little tubs of acrylic. Maybe I can put a black acrylic base coat on straight onto the plastic. So I tried that and it was an unmitigated disaster. I've washed most of it off. Um, having done a bit more research now, I'm fairly certain I need to prime these before I can put acrylic on them. Now, I don't have any model makers primer, but I do have the primer in stock that I use on 3D printed parts. My concern with this is that it's quite good at covering small surface imperfections and I'm a little bit worried it's going to actually cover up all of the detail on this tiny model. But okay, so I've given this two coats of this cheap industrial primer. My main concern was that I was going to cover over all of the detail, but actually it's done a really good job. Honestly, it feels like I'm getting a bit better at this. I don't have a lot of grey paint left, but I'd like to do some slightly sharper edges on these grey areas. I was a bit vague when it came to the elder green. Let's see whether I can get a slightly crisper edge and then across here. Now I'm, I'm pleased with that. I'm going to take the remaining paint back out of here. And start cleaning up. Let's wait for the compressor to finish. Come on, be there. Right. Things that have been a revelation to me during this spraying. These little water bottles that allow you to dispense a drop at a time. Brilliant for working in small quantities. 
pipettes. I used to waste about as much paint as I'm now using, just pouring from cup to cup. Being able to pipette drops of paint to and from the airbrush, it's been a bit of a revelation. Um, a different gravity feed airbrush where I can actually see what's going on without a side cup, that's been brilliant as well. And then masking, really found my zen during masking and thoroughly enjoyed cutting off tiny bits of tape. Um, we'll see how well it works in a minute once I've mixed up some paint. I think it's a bit thick. So, now it's finished, and I learnt a lot. It turns out it wasn't just patience I was short of when I was my son's age. A lot of skill is needed to put these little kits together well. I did a reasonable job with the painting, but I know I made some rookie errors in the glue up and with the transfers. I don't plan on keeping this model, so I've decided to shoot a fair amount of video before I part with it. Stay safe everyone. <laughs>